my teacher was like, all you can use is graphite pencils at your big, big age. If you don't buckle down and start to pain. Okay, so she didn't quite say it in those words. But when I was at school, that's all I heard. <laughs> anyway, today I'm gonna tell you my art journey and how I became the artist I am today. So it's gonna be a long one. Grab a drink and let's go. Hey people, it's Temi if you're new here and it's Tuesday, so it's time for another Temi's tirade, which is when I come and rant about different art topics. So last week I talked about my worst commission experience and it was a truly traumatic experience. If you want to see that video, I'll link the playlist here. But in today's video, I got a comment from a lovely subscriber. So thank you Zafira Fatima for your comment. It said, please include the topic of Temi's art process and evolution. Talk about what you learned, where you learned, how you kept patience to get to this point, what motivated you, how did you maintain confidence and more. Please do a topic on Temi's tirade. I'd love to listen to it, please. So here it is. A lot of you don't know, but I actually started YouTube 10 years ago. On the 7th of April, 2011, I uploaded in my first video, which was a Jessie J drawing. I mean, it's still up there if you want to see it, but I did drawings and videos here and there for many years until I finally returned to YouTube nearly two years ago. In my welcome slash reintroduction video, I talked a little bit about my art journey. Hello everyone. Oh, nope, okay. Hi. This whole thing is tilted. And oh my gosh, I was so nervous. <laughs> this is my first time bringing my face on camera and uh. <laughs> But if you wanna find out a bit about my early art journey, then watch that video. But in this one, I'll talk more about my portraiture journey. So I'll talk a little bit about school and I'll show some of my pieces. So I'll speak about what I've learned, things that I wish I knew back then, but also some tips to help you remain motivated. The beginning. At school in year nine, which is when you're around 13 to 14, I had an amazing art teacher and she is still 100% one of my favorite people. And she was so awesome that anytime we had any work to do, she'd always show us an example. And because she was incredible, it inspired me at that age to just do better with my art. And I remember that we had to do a self portrait. <laughs> so I will show you guys this self portrait. It's not great. <laughs> I actually recorded videos of my school art in October 2019 and I never edited or uploaded it but I'll show you clips from that video so that you can see my actual old work. But yes, so with this self-portrait, it was very difficult for me because I was the only black person in the class and if you know anything about drawing black people, especially in graphite pencils, you need to put down so much pigment. So in contrast, if you're drawing fairer skin, you can get away with leaving a lot of the white of the page showing and then you can just use your pencil to add some shadows. But for dark skin, I needed to put down enough pigment for even the mid-tones in the first place and then even more for shadows. So it was just a struggle. And, and at the time, I didn't have anyone to teach me or tell me what to do. So I was just, you know, trial and error. And this is what the piece came out like. A portrait. And I don't think I did a bad job. I mean, it's not... <laughs> it's not great, but... I didn't think it's that bad. I think this was my first self-portrait and I think it's okay, it's not bad, but definitely I had a lot to learn. And so when I moved on to year 10 and 11, which is when you do your GCSEs, which are the main exams that you do at the end of high school, I still focused on portraits. So each year with our art exams, we had different topics. So for example, we had similarities and differences. And I was like, oh, how can I make that into people? You know, the similarities versus the differences between us, maybe look at some twins. I was making it up. <laughs> like even we had another topic, ordinary versus extraordinary. And once again, I'm like, I can look at some ordinary people, even extraordinary people. Would you count celebs as extraordinary people? I don't know, but an ordinary person with an extraordinary life experience. I was just making it up. I was trying to get away with drawing as many portraits as possible because I knew I had an interest in portraits and I wanted to be able to practice it as much as I could. And at this age of 14 to 16, all I did were graphite pencil drawings. So if I did any paintings, it was of a flower or another still life object. When I looked at portraits, it was just always pencils. And at this time, my teacher didn't encourage me to do anything else she knew that I was good at it so she didn't push me I didn't want to be pushed so I didn't mind the largest drawing I ever did at this time was an A2 drawing for my final piece okay so at this point I'm very much in my comfort zone and then I moved to a new school for my A levels which is year 12 to 13 which is when you're age 16 to 18 and this new school god 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 they really dealt with me <laughs> 
so in this school all of the students have been primed from a young age to produce amazing massive paintings so while in year nine when I was just doing this tiny self-portrait they were doing amazing one meter by one meter canvases so joining the school I knew nothing and I immediately felt like I was in the deep end I had to immediately jump into painting I had to start using acrylics within three months of learning to paint I was having to start using oils the biggest piece I'd done previously was an A2 drawing but now we had to do A2 sheets for just the studies and then the final piece were massive 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 canvases that was the biggest learning curve for me and it wasn't easy I struggled so much and at the time I didn't know how to do anything so how do you mix skin tone how do you mix paints period how do you make a portrait look like someone in color it really was a myth and the teachers were looking at me like where did they find this one <laughs> at the time in my personal work I was still just doing graphite pencil portraits and I remember that I did a soft pastel piece and I showed my teacher and she looked at it impressed. She was like, oh, this is quite good. But when I tried to bring in more soft pastels, she said, I need to focus on paints. And at this time I was very much inspired by Heather Rooney who does amazing, incredible color pencil drawings. And again, I show my teacher like, oh, I want to venture into color pencils. And she's looking at me like, you need to focus on your paints. It was this whole thing of color pencils not being seen as proper materials. Because I guess if you think about a color pencil sketch, you won't think that you can produce real amazing, realistic drawings. But at the same time, I could see what Heather Rooney was doing but my teacher was not trying to hear this so it really discouraged my interest in color pencils I obviously couldn't learn that at school so I started practicing with color pencils by myself and if you've seen my old sketchbook tour you would have seen that it wasn't easy it was a big journey my first color pencil pieces were just looking a bit higgy and haggard but we got somewhere in the end although I was very much out of my depth at this school it taught me a lot about colors about color theory my final piece when I left the school I was mixing colors you know I was using the purples a bit of green I mean when I first started I was pouring out the flesh tone paint and at the end I was you know putting a bit of green a bit of purple a bit of blue I definitely learned a lot about color and mixing colors but the fact that I was discouraged from using color pencils didn't help the color pencil journey that I'm now on growth so I've already mentioned that I had to venture into color pencils myself so I had to learn everything from scratch that's why I say I'm a self-taught artist because everything I know is based on research that I've done there's so many tutorials on YouTube I've got so many tutorials myself so if you're also interested in color pencils I'll link a playlist here and you can get started with the blending tutorials and then doing portraits I started with a basic set of 24 and I don't even know what brand it is my sister got the set from China and then I moved to Prismacolors which I think if you're a beginner in the color pencil space that's a great professional brand to start off with so it really helps you blend the pencils easier then I moved on to using Faber-Castell pencils so they have a harder core and they're more difficult to blend but they're really good and they're great for details and then I moved on to Karen Dash Luminance pencils my faves of all time they are amazing amazing professional quality pencils but they are super expensive then I moved on to using pan pastels as a base so pan pastels really help with this color and pencil drawing process because they form a good coverage and then you can use color and pencils for your details over the top so I really love this method and I've got many pan pastel drawing tutorials on my channel this is my go-to method if I'm doing a portrait because if you're using colouring pencils on your own you are going to finish your pencils <laughs> but the reason why I have so many pencils and they've been able to last me all these years is because of using a base another option for using a base is by using markers it's something that I discovered last year there are a few different markers that I've tried I've got a couple of videos as well using markers it's the same whole thing of being able to cover the base and then going over the top with colouring pencils if you want an idea of the art supplies I use I've actually got a video showing my supplies so I'll link it here I might do an updated one in the future because the collection has grown but that one covers all the supplies I've used for all of the portraits you would have seen and in the future with my art I'm not even limiting myself to portraits anymore so I want to practice using gouache which if you don't know it's a mix between acrylic and watercolor so it can be watered down like watercolor but you can also really get it opaque and I'm interested in trying portraits of those trying landscapes just trying different things just to expand my skill set expand my remit with my art but of course I'll still do art tutorials I know you guys want those color pencil tutorials so more of those will keep coming now I'm going to tell you what I've learned on my art journey so five things that I've learned that I wish I would have known before number one don't take no for an answer. In the art space, I feel like we hear so many no's before we even start to hear yeses. So that could be someone saying, artists don't make money. Why are you wasting your time doing art? Newsflash, 
If I want to be broke, let me be broke in peace. But also artists do make money. <laughs> in this internet day and age, you don't need to be dead for your art to be appreciated or for you to be able to make money for your, from your art. I've got a video about ways you can make money as an artist. I'll link it down below. So don't listen to people saying you can't and don't take no for an answer. And for me, I really had to learn that my art teacher didn't know everything. She discouraged me about colouring pencils because she didn't know any better at the time. I mean, I could see what Heather Rooney was producing. And as Nigerians would say, does she have two heads? So to me, it was like, if Heather can produce this, why can't I? And that's what motivated me to keep going. So I wasn't going to take no from my art teacher saying colouring pencils isn't a good enough medium to use. And I practiced by myself and I managed to get to where I am. The second point leading onto that nicely is that inspiration is important. I've mentioned Heather Rooney a few times in this video but a few of my other faves are Bekay, Marcello Berenji and CJ Henry. These are amazing 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 colour pencil artists and again if I'm looking at what they're able to produce I just need to think about what supplies they're using, what techniques they're using and what's stopping me from also being able to produce work like this. The only thing stopping me is my own self-limiting belief. There's no reason on this planet if they can do this why I can't do that so if you also want to produce art look for some artists doing what you want to do if they're able to do this there's nothing stopping you from also being able to get there with practice with dedication and with focus don't look to them to get discouraged because you're not there yet but rather look to them for motivation that you will get there Number three, start with what you can. So in this video, I shared about how I started with some very cheap pencils from China and the work I was able to produce then to when I saved up and got my more expensive art supplies. Don't die trying to buy expensive art supplies today. Start with what you can, use what you can. And eventually as your skill grows, your collection also grows. I've done a video where I use cheap Crayola pencils and the more expensive Karen Dash pencils. And a lot of the comments in the video even said the Crayola side looked better. So it just goes to show it's not about how expensive the art material you're using are. So focus on just getting what you can and using that to practice to develop your skill. The fourth point is practice and persevere. Take time, be patient, the improvements will come. Remember my art journey is 10 years in the making and you've seen some of my old work. <laughs> We all start somewhere. So don't look at where you are now with someone else's middle. If you put the time and the practice towards it, you will improve. None of this happened overnight for me and it's going to be the same with you. If you're at school and you don't have time to do art at the moment, if you do take art as a subject, try to incorporate the types of art you like to do. So like I mentioned, I started doing portraits all the time. If portraits is what you're interested in, try to incorporate that in the art you're doing at school. But if you don't get to do art at school at the moment, really utilize your school holidays, utilize your weekends as you can. Don't come and die, do what you can. Focus on your studies because that's what's important right now. But know that in the future, you will have more time for art. And the fifth point is draw what you want. Don't be worried about people that gatekeep. Realism isn't art, anime is this, digital art is that. If you've watched my Is Realism Real Art video, you know exactly how I feel about this topic. <laughs> You're going to find people giving their unsolicited opinions, not minding their business and telling you how they really feel about the art you're doing. And you just need to ignore them. You will find them throughout your art career. Till today, I get unsolicited opinions. And so you might as well start ignoring them now. And draw what you want, do what makes you happy, paint what you want, don't listen to what other people might say. Whew, okay, so this is a bit of a long one, so thanks for sticking with me through it. And it wasn't much of a rant, but too long didn't read. Art has been a long process for me. I really hated it at school, and I actually struggled along the way. So if you find that you're still at the struggling stage, don't worry, it's not going to last forever, you will overcome. If you're struggling to balance and have time for it, or if you're struggling to improve your skills, I've got loads of drawing tutorials on my channel, which will hopefully help you. And I'm just going to say, keep going, you can do this, I believe in you. So thank you so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you on my next one. Goodbye.